Macy's one of the big stories on the downside. Joining me right now is the Bonson Group of Hightower Advisors founder, David Bonson, and Strategist Research Partners CEO, Jason Trenner. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Where are we in terms of the, the rally that we saw after the election and putting money to work right now, Jason? How would you characterize the market for the investor out there watching? Well, listen, I think it's quite strong. I think one of the things that's probably been missed by a lot of the people that write about the markets is that this hasn't been driven um, solely or even really in part by the Trump uh, agenda, uh, which in my view is good because it means that there's more room when the Trump economic agenda actually gets passed. It's driven, it's been driven much more by earnings and earnings for the first quarter look like they should be up somewhere between 14 or 15 percent. Even if you took energy out of that, they would be up double digits. And in some ways, that's like kind of the greatest story never told. Uh, you had an earnings recession in 2015 into 2016. Now the market's being driven by good old fashioned fundamentals. Fundamentals, which I think is very positive. I think it's such an important point that you bring up. Again, it's not just earnings, it's also revenue. And you want to see strong revenue because you know it doesn't have to do with cutting back costs or anything. Revenue up about 6% in the first quarter. That's right. And, and I, I do think if you look at the president's economic agenda, some of it can get through without Congress. Financial deregulation, energy deregulation, in my opinion, that will lift economic growth going into 2018. If you then get tax reform and, and good progress on the budget, it could lift growth even more. So the revenue growth you're talking about could even be greater a year from now than it is today. It's a great point. But, but David, this Trump policy has everybody wondering, you know, what it's going to mean for markets and the economy. But the fundamental backdrop, as Jason points out, is pretty strong. It, it really is. And I think that, uh, what, to his point, this is 6% revenue growth, 14% earnings growth without a lot of GDP growth. Right. Normally, that top line piece is going to have to be uh, pushed from some either CapEx increase. Uh, I mean, certainly animal spirits are high. Business confidence, consumer confidence is very high. But there does seem to me to be plenty of catalyst for, for further growth. Ultimately, though, Jason's point is the one I would hit home. This has not been driven by anything that the administration's done, and not even as much as things that they anticipate doing. The earnings recovery has been strong. The earnings recession he referred to is largely driven in energy. The earnings recovery has not been dependent on energy. It's but a good story. You've got to look for special situations and areas where you can find the biggest opportunity. Where are you finding that right now? I actually think that energy sector is energy. the one that is most interesting to us that has not participated in this rally. It's actually still a negative return since the election and since 2017 began and yet it has the potential benefit of deregulation not requiring Congress all of this talk about oil prices coming down is a huge boost to the midstream energy sector. Volumes are through the roof. There is more and more production. We think the energy story, the whole cabinet and team he's put together, to me, are really behind this yeah. story. I want to ask you about some of these large, uh, you know, industrial uh, global companies because we had news this past week, late Thursday, we learned that the Trump administration announced a significant trade deal with China, mm -hmm. one that will boost exports and increase access to the gigantic Chinese economy, 1.3 billion people, for America's beef producers and natural gas exporters. This is the White House is also working with China to uh, clamp down uh, the North Korean threat. I spoke about this on Mornings with Maria this week with former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Here's what she said. They're trying to change China's calculus about this. China is really the only country with any influence. I don't think complete influence, but some influence with the North Koreans. They've always been reluctant to do really tough things with the North Koreans because they've worried about the collapse of the regime more than they've worried about a nuclear North Korea. The administration is saying to them, worry more about a nuclear North Korea, because if you can't do something about the path that they are on, we will have to. It does feel like uh, the president has been able to move China, I mean, in, in terms of its willingness to help on North Korea, as well as this deal on trade. What's your take on the deal on trade, David? Well, and I think maybe China's been able to move President Trump a little as well. Him That's walking true. Away Good from point. The currency manipulation thing was a very uh, a wise thing Great for him point. to do. And, and yet I think ultimately this issue with uh, increasing exports is the greatest way to make the trade story beneficial 
to both sides, uh, particularly the political benefit to President Trump. He's going to increase the trade and have the economic benefit, but still be able to tell the story that the trade deficit came down. But you hit the point about natural gas. That, to me, is the most amazing thing that we have not been talking about, the ability to begin exports to natural gas. We know we can do it with Mexico, but the idea of being able to go transatlantic to Asia, there's a huge story there. It's going to take years to play out, but the fact that the administration is going that direction is a big bullish Yeah, and everybody wanted to sell oil and natural gas to China. They need it desperately. I mean, you know, Russia desperately. wanted to be that person, I mean, oh, that country. Jason, how vital to the markets and the economy is this good relationship with China? Because I feel like for years we've been saying, oh, you know, American companies want to sell to the 1.1 or 1.3 billion people in China, but the Chinese won't allow it. They will only allow you to have a, a you know, a junior limited partnership or owning under 49 percent of a, of a venture. Right. I think it's important, but it's frankly, it's much more important to China to be able to do, do business with us than it is for us to do business with them uh, because we have such a strong domestic consumption based uh, economy. It can only help the U.S. economy and I think the president, of course I'm a fan, I think he's uh, recasting the relationship so that it's much more on an equal footing so that there's there's going to be more opportunities for U.S. businesses to do business in China. I think most of the trade agreements in the post-war period were largely done on purpose um, at the U.S.'s disadvantage and that was largely to promote peace. It's a great idea. But the thing is though that's 75 years ago. It's, it's time I think especially given uh, parts of the country that are hurting it's time for America to think a little bit more about its own workers and I think in that regard it's a, it's a big positive politically and economically. You think right. We were talking about trade war and now we're talking about expanding the, right. the dual-sided trade. It's, a, it's remarkable. David, Jason, great to see you both. Thank you. Thank you so much David Bond. Johnson and Jason Trennard. Don't go anywhere. More